Welcome, if you just joined us, Samantha and JJ are still with us. That's quite staggering. Yeah, um, well, less not for me. This is my life, so yes. <laughs> so it, it says here on my notes, Network Rail say there are more than 200 stations across Britain which have accessible step-free routes, but that's such, a, there's 2,500 stations. Mm -hmm. So it's such a small amount. Um, well, look, we're gonna be joined now by disability employment specialist, specialist Guy Chaudoua. Uh, he's from the disability charity Scope. And we're gonna be discussing uh, what benefits you're entitled to if you're a disabled person. Also, what support is there that you might not already be aware of? So if you've got any questions for Guy, or you want to share your experience perhaps with us and the rest of our audience, then do give us a call now. 027 862 is the number that you need. Uh, Guy, thank you for joining us, uh, welcome. Uh, in a moment, uh, we're gonna be getting uh, some of the uh, some of your advice for people uh, and stuff. But Samantha, you're also a big advocate, of I course, uh, and ambassador. Tell us a little bit about uh, what I have found, and the reason I want really wanted to do this is a lot of people call in the show mm -hmm. on unrelated matters, and it always comes up saying, "I'm disabled. I don't know what to do." Yeah. Do you think that we've done a good enough job as a society to look after our disabled, and also to make sure that they know what help? is that out there for them and where they can find it? In all honesty, living in the UK with an impairment or a neurodivergence is living in a state of perpetual fear. And yeah. that is ultimately because we aren't educated, we are constantly dehumanised, devalued. When we do reach out and ask for help, we are either you know seen as benefit scroungers. We are seen as people who are a drain on our families and our community. There's a constant fear of those amenities being taken away by mostly non-disabled people who will look at us and judge whether we are fit or worthy of that help. You know, even simple language such as special needs. You know, think about that. What's special about being able to be in the community? Accessing a bathroom. You know, so the whole culture around disability still is leaning towards to say disability equals tragedy and therefore your life is lesser than. It's an, it's an ableist concept. And I, you know, I love that we get to do sections like this on television because there are so many people that contact me personally, yeah. and I'm sure you'll know, who are mm -hmm. absolutely desperate because there's such shame about asking for help. Well, everyone in this room at one point or another, irrespective of who we are, will ask for help. So why is it disabled people that have to carry around and internalise that shame? Uh, before we uh, move on to Guy, I, I want to talk a little bit about the, your Don't Want Your Cash yeah. campaign. Uh, don't Want Our Cash. Don't Want Our Cash. You don't want my money. About, tell me a little bit about this campaign yes. because it's a, it's a very interesting <laughs> campaign. Tell us what it's about. The, the combined spending power of the disability community globally is worth eight trillion pounds. It's the largest untapped market in the UK, worth uh, 279 billion. However, we're not spending our money because you know why? We can't access spaces. We can't go um, to the to the pub. We can't go to restaurants. We can't you know go and buy clothes. So I ultimately set up a a page where people can post uh, access else, take pictures of places and then hopefully take that to Parliament and go, do you know what? We've got the law, but the law is clearly not working in our favour because I have got this catalogue of people showing me that when they go out and about, they cannot have autonomous, independent life. So, yeah, if you are on X... <laughs> that one. <laughs> you're on that. Um, then join and use the hashtag do not, don't want our cash to highlight this. And I'm going to determine to take this to Parliament at the end of the year. Good. Well, listen, good luck. And uh, if anything we can do, let us know. Uh, Guy, uh, let us kick off with, uh, well, look, some we've heard recently that companies need to be a, a little bit more upfront and sort of prepared uh, to make reasonable adjustments to support disabled people that are working with them. So what do we mean by reasonable adjustments? What, what, is, what is to be expected? So reasonable is an interesting term anyway, but this is actually enshrined in law in the Equality Act in 2010, mm -hmm. that um, companies need to make adjustments. So this could be adjustments to um, working hours, giving someone more breaks, um, having specialist equipment so they can do their job, so they can achieve in a workplace the same as their non-disabled colleagues. Mm. Now, again, I've been really keen to do this because a lot of people who call us up t tell us about, well, I'm disabled, I don't know what help is available. Mm -hmm. So let's deal with that first. Yeah. If you are unable to work 
and you have to uh, rely on some help. Yeah. Um, what is the best place or where can you find what you're entitled to to make sure that you're not missing out help on help that is available to you out there? Yeah, and that's definitely something we do at Scope on a daily basis. Yeah. We have a helpline and our website has um, a calculator that will actually tell you what benefits you're entitled to. So there are lots of different uh, benefits that if you're out of work, so, such as employment support allowance or ESA, um, and similarly universal credit as well, which is a wider overarching benefit, which is included housing benefit now as well. Um, there's also personal independence payment or PIP, you might hear a lot about, uh, which you can claim if you are in work or out of work, and that helps with the extra cost of being disabled. OK, I think uh, we've got a question on that very subject uh, uh, just coming up now, because Joanne has got in touch from Lancashire. Joanne, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for getting in touch. What's your question for Guy? Uh, my question is really, I do get the maximum enhanced for living and mobility, the PIP. Mm -hmm. um, I get ESA, contribution-based, which that's causing me problems because it, it's I'm classing it as it's the wrong benefit because I can't I can't seem to get any assistance with anything else. I don't get housing benefit because I'm a homeowner um, and my mortgage has gone up just like everybody else. Um, I was on a few weeks ago um, with Alexis because my boiler broke about that's a month right. ago. I can't get a grant, even though Alexis did say try here, try there. I can't get a grant. I've still no boiler. I broke my wheelchair in a pothole on a crossing. Joanne... Nobody will uh, help because I'm on contribution base. Joanne, I, I, I remember our call. I remember it very well, and I'm sorry to hear that you're still without a boiler. Guy, what can Joanne do? Surely, surely she is exactly the person that our yeah. society is meant to be looking after. Yeah, definitely. And um, what I would encourage Joanne to do is to contact Scope's Helpline. Uh, also, we have a disability energy service who can provide advice on very much things like this, and they may be able to help um, with things like boiler costs and, and being able to signpost the right thing. And it sounds like Joanne has tried quite a lot um, and it is a real struggle to go through all the different kind of channels and stuff like that but if you haven't reached out to us jo Joanna can I really encourage you to do that uh, Joanna can you can you contact scope that they they are there to help you and we'll, we'll if you if you stay on the line we'll make sure that you've got the number for scope so that you can get in touch please get in touch with them and Joanne thank you so much for calling I'm so sorry that you're still uh, struggling with getting your boiler fixed uh, but thank you for for getting in touch. Let's speak to Penny in Cambridgeshire. Penny, welcome to the show. What would you like to ask, Guy? Um, well, my question is on the disability benefits. I'm on. Uh, I'm 73, so I'm I'm getting a pension. Um, disability benefits. Um, I have to be born before 1948, and I was born in 1951. So I don't qualify. Um, so they tell me to go for attendance allowance, but basically I'm not disabled enough for, for a attendance allowance. It would be too much. So what am I supposed to do three years, you know, after the cutoff date? Why is there a cutoff date? OK, uh, Penny, thank you. Guy, do, do you have any so, advice for like, So uh, my suggestion was going to be attendance allowance, and if that has been turned down, I would definitely try and challenge that decision. Um, we find that most uh, benefit appeals are... Um, uh, once they've been challenged, they are then granted. So I think it is worth getting back in touch and maybe being in touch with someone like the Citizens Advice as well. They might be able to give more advice on kind of attendance allowance and how you can appeal that. OK, uh, so uh, appealing, Citizens Advice, Penny... Uh, definitely somewhere to go. You're nodding away furiously, Samantha, yeah, from what you've been hearing. That you, you know, to, to access these services, you have to have um, a lot of sav savviness. You know, you've got to have the courage. You, you, you are constantly faced with people looking and judging you, mm. non-disabled people looking and judging you and determining whether you are disabled <clears throat> enough or whether you're faking it or not. You know, I work part time and you know, people probably see me on TV but uh, and think everything is rosy, but I financially struggle in. I have to pay hundreds of pounds towards 
care. I have to pay towards my wheelchair because you can't just get wheelchairs, you know, handed out to you. This wheelchair costs four and a half thousand pounds. My power chair costs nine and a half thousand pounds. Living with a disability is really, really challenging. And when you actually have the courage to seek that help, you are often, you know, kind of really degraded by the people that are even on the, the phone to yeah. you. We need to empower disabled people. We need to teach them what they are entitled to. And this is why the work that Scope does is, you know, really great. But my, I can sympathise already with both of the callers. JJ, I know that you work uh, as an ambassador for people with motor neuron disease as well. Is, is, are these stories ringing a bell for you as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my grandmother had motor neuron disease, but she lived in Denmark. When anyone who suffers with this disease, you have to have your whole life changed. So you've got to have the doors widened, the bath's got to be changed, your, the uh, hospital bed's got to be brought in. You need 24 hour care essentially. In Denmark, it's much easier to access these kind of things. What we find here is it's, you're jumping through hoops and you're having, you're having to, as, as, as she says, you're having to prove your disability time and time again. It needs to be much easier. Things, things need to be changed and, and it needs to be easier to, to get the help that you need. And thank God for people like Scope and Guy, because yeah, it's, it's an absolute mess. OK, uh, let's take some more calls, because uh, plenty of <clears> you have got questions for Guy. Let's speak to David in Essex. David, welcome to the show. What would you like to ask, David? Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for taking the call. Um, I speak on behalf of my wife, who's totally disabled, and I communicate, has been for some time. She's in the of disability uh, living allowances, um, and when she got to 65, I made an application for her old age pension, and was told that she wasn't entitled to it because of the uh, benefit she was getting. I wonder if you can tell me why I thought old age pension was an entitlement rather than a benefit. Uh, Guy? So that's a tricky one without knowing all the circumstances, but it could be to do with the amount of national insurance she paid. Right. Um, she, but... worked, she worked for 34 years. Mm. So 30 years work, and from what I understand from David, because she's getting the disability benefits, they're somehow saying to her she's not entitled to her pension. Yeah, and I think that might be yeah. because it counts as income, and so she's earning too much. She's above the threshold where the pension comes in, and this is the problem, that we don't have a joined-up benefit system, mm -hmm. and so you could be getting one pot from here, one pot from there, and then the, the DWP, the Department of Work and Pensions, um, consider that as income, and that's an interesting one. If, if David wants to pursue this, what should be his first port of call? Citizens' advice? Citizens advice? Or Age UK, I would say they are more kind of the experts in that kind of pension-related things and pension credit as well, because that's quite a complicated area. OK, David, I, I hope that was a steer towards what might be happening to your question, but Citizens' advice, Age UK, perhaps should be your next port of call if you haven't done so already, but thank you for your call. Uh, let's take another. Linda in Berkshire. Linda, welcome. Welcome to the show. What would you like to ask? Um, my question relates to are there any avenues for a grant stroke based benefit to further one's skills stroke qualifications um, so that my son can um, essentially improve his uh, future prospects um, either with apprenticeships or um, gaining extra um, skills uh, and I didn't know whether there's anything that I could claim for him or he could claim with regards to that. OK. Guy? Um, my first question, Linda, how old is he? 33. 33, OK, so he's, he's not in full-time education because there, there's a difference in terms of full-time education. So um, there are some grants out there for kind of additional learning, but is it in terms of, like, support he's looking to kind of gain employment? Is that what he's looking for at the moment? He's in full-time education... Sorry, full-time work. OK. But he's, he's on the sort of minimum wage type work. Um, and I'm, I'm was trying to find a way of helping him improve his future prospects by gaining more skills or further education uh, avenues that he could do. Maybe that would involve a grant or okay. a benefit. And that, that's my, my okay. main question. So... Um... So what I, my team does at Scope, we support people who are in work as well to get into 
better paid jobs or jobs with more prospects. Um, so our service is called Support to Work. So I would definitely advise your son applying for that and speaking to one of my team because we can look at what training is out there. And there is lots of free training out there that you don't necessarily need a grant for in terms of um, developing skills and career progression as well. So I would definitely advise him to sign up for our service um, and have a chat with one of my advisors. And that's at Scope and yeah. it's called? Support to Work. So support just to Work. Google Scope Support to Work and you'll Scope find Support to Work. Uh, thank you, Linda. Let's take another call from Debbie in Manchester. Debbie, welcome to the show. What would you like to ask? Hiya. Hi. Um, I'm having trouble with my drive. Um, well, it's not a drive, actually. I want to know if there's any help out there for me to drop my curb because yeah. I am disabled. And the car, obviously, if, if the weather's bad, I can't get out because I can't walk very far. Um, okay, Debbie, I, I hear I, I, we're, we're short on time and I see a lot of nodding here, so I think they're totally on to what you're talking about. Samantha, do you want to take I this mean, one? Definitely reach out and get an occupational therapist involved. That would be my first point. You can get a small um, home um, grant. Yeah. Um, it can be up to about £30,000, yeah, I, I believe, so. and it, at and, the moment. And it's also worth speaking to your local council yes. as well um, about that in terms of, it, of an access need um, yeah. for a drop curb as well. Can I? So, just, yes. Yeah. Go. Go uh, ahead. No. Can I just say, uh, anyone that's listening who still has maybe a negative narrative towards dis disabled people, you know, anyone can become disabled at any time in their life. We are the fastest grow growing minority group. We have got an aging population. So please approach disability with compassion and sensitivity. Um, I think that's all I need to say <laughs> well, on I, that. Ultimately, I, I, I am very glad that you said it. Um, and uh, Debbie, thank you for your question because I think that's a question that I've often had to deal with uh, people wanting help with actually getting that pavement dropped so they can access their homes. Uh, now, Guy's mentioned a couple of places where you'll be able to find support on this. So first, you could call Scopes Citizens uh, Helpline for free. They're on 0808 800 3333. That's 0808 800 3333. You can email them on uh, helpline at scope org.uk so that's helpline at scope.co.uk and if you need support with ensuring that you're being treated fairly in the workplace you can ask uh, you can speak to ACAS uh, by calling them on 0300 123 uh, 1100 that's 0300 123 1100 uh, or of course head to the website that's acas.org.uk um, I'm so glad we did this um, and I hope we actually get to do it again because I'm sure that there are more questions out there.